Keep your books there to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19. One verse of Scripture. Thank you, Lord. Revelation 1, 19 says this. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. In other words, write the things which were, which is past tense. Write the things which are, which is present tense. Write the things which will be, which is future tense. My message tonight here, with the help of the Lord, is the unintended consequences of a failed witness. Let me say that again. My message tonight is the unintended consequences of a failed witness. Lord Jesus, let's worship him right now. God, we give you all the praise and the glory tonight. And God, we cannot do anything, God, without you, God. And God, without your anointing, Jesus. God, without your wisdom, dear God. God, without your power, dear God. Without you, Jesus. Without the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. God, we can do nothing. So, Lord, we ask God that tonight, God, you and you alone be glorified. We ask God for your anointing here tonight. We ask God that you help us to hear what thou saith the Lord here tonight in your word, God. We pray, God, that our lives, God, would be changed, dear God. And God, we would take a hold of your word, dear God. And let your word, God, be meditated in our hearts, dear God. And that, God, that we would not be a hearer only, God. But, God, we would leave here again tonight. And, God, that we would be a doer of the word of God. And, God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. The unintended consequences of a failed witness. First of all, tonight, what I want to make sure and clear to you is I'm not here tonight looking for people for outreach. I'm not looking for people here tonight to go door knocking, although I welcome you to be a part of that, all right? Amen. Because you see, there's a difference in what we are doing. In fact, when you are actually going out door knocking, when you're stopping people in the streets, you are not being a witness. Amen. What you really are doing is fulfilling the command given to us in Luke chapter 14 and 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Praise the Lord. There is a difference in outreach. There is a difference in door knocking. There's a difference in going to the highways and the hedges. Amen. Because that purpose is to compel people to come into the house of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. So I'm not looking for that tonight, amen, but nevertheless, I would encourage somebody here tonight, amen, to get actively involved, and you come on out with this, and I promise you God will not only bless you, but he'll bless those that you reach out there. Can you say amen again? So here, a simple definition of witness is simply this. Is a testimony of a fact or an event. Amen. It's also the testimony of one who has personal knowledge or experience of something. You tonight have personal knowledge of something. Amen. You tonight have experience. You've had an experience. Can you say amen? Because everyone here, I believe, has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Anybody here received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Let me tell you something. With the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are an effective witness. Amen. Because you have witnessed that experience. You have received the Lord Jesus Christ by his spirit living and dwelling within you. Amen. You have the power of God with you wherever you go. Amen. You can talk to God and God talks to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that is what a witness is. Praise the Lord. So here tonight, first of all, what I want to bring to you, I don't know how you review the Bible. I don't know how you view the Bible. Let me put it that way. Do you look at the Bible as just a book and you just kind of casually read it? Or do you look into the book, amen, and you devour it, amen, as if you're devouring something you really, really, truly appreciate when you sit down for dinner? 
You see, the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So it is not a matter of us having a Bible. It's not a matter of us just opening up the pages, amen. But it's a matter that are we going to chew on it, amen. Are we going to digest it, amen. Are we going to receive it, amen. Are we going to kind of burp it up, so to speak, and say, man, that was good. Come on, somebody can say amen tonight. Amen. I said, somebody here can say amen tonight. Praise the Lord. So here, it says here, write the things which were. So let me, let me bring to you some things that were, if that's okay. Because, you see, I believe what the Bible declares. Amen. The Bible is the word of God. God says it's forever settled in heaven. God says, I change not, therefore God's word does not change. And do you have faith in the word of God tonight? Do you have faith to believe what the word of God declares? And do you have faith to believe what the word of God declares of you personally? Do you believe everything God says about you? Amen? Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, it says this here. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor infamous, which is male prostitution, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revivals, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now look what the word of God says here. It says, and such were some of you. We're talking about the things that were. We're talking about the things here that were. Amen. You were some of you were all these things. Amen. Such were some of you. The Bible says that's past tense. Praise the Lord. Because it goes on and says, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And now that is present tense. Amen. Present tense. Amen. You are sanctified. You have been washed and you have been set apart for God. Can you say amen? amen. So let me tell you something here tonight. This is what God says you are presently. This is what God says you are now. Amen. And if you're living in a lifestyle of fornication, God does not say you're a fornicator. Amen. He says you are sanctified. I want you to hear that. If you're living a, li a, li a life of lying, amen, God never called you a liar. He says you're sanctified. You're a child of God. Amen. Amen. If you're committing adultery tonight or have been committing adultery, God didn't say you're an adulterer. God didn't say you're a fornicator. God didn't say you're a liar. God says you are sanctified. You are set apart from me. That is how God looks at you. And that is how you need to see yourself. And I will say that if you're involved in any of the things that you were, then once again you need to come out with those things, amen, and acknowledge what God says you are. I said, acknowledge of what God says you are. If God says you are sanctified, if God says you are holy, if God says you've been washed, amen, if God says you've been set apart, amen, well, that is who you are now, present tense. Can you say praise the Lord? Now, that's what the Word of God declares. And I don't know about you, but I purpose to stand on the Word of God. Live the Word of God. And be through all my power, amen, what the Word of God declares that I am. Now, how about you, amen? Are you going, to, amen, to purpose to live what God says that you are now? Present tense. Who you are now. Not who you were, but who you are now in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So let's go on. In 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, but you are, we're talking about present tense now. God, help us understand these things here because God says this is who you are now. This is who you are now. This is who you are now. But you are present tense, a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. Amen. You are a peculiar people. And that word peculiar simply means you are a people belonging to God. You are God's jewels. 
Amen? Now, this is what God declares that you are present tense. And that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let me tell you something tonight. Faith is not about how you feel. Faith is not if you're on the top of the roller coaster or the bottom of the roller coaster. Faith is not about your circumstances in life, whether they're good or bad, in between, whatever have you. Faith is a choice, my friend, and faith is a choice to believe that no matter how I feel, no matter what's going on in my life, I believe God. This is who I am. I am a part of a royal nation. Amen. I am God's jewel. I am a child of God. Amen. And it has nothing to do with how I feel. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe that God really wants us to understand these things of who you are presently. And the world needs to know who you are. Tell you why in a little bit here. In Romans chapter 8 and 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? Verse 37 says, No, no, no. It says, and all these things that we do experience, and all of these things that we do experience and will experience, the Word of God declares, amen, that you and I are not just conquerors, amen, but we are more than conquerors. Do you understand who you are tonight, amen? Do you understand the power of God that you have tonight? Do you know who you stand with tonight? God declares that you are more than a conqueror, amen. Not just a conqueror, not just somebody hanging on, my friend. Not somebody just getting by. Amen, come on. You are more than that. God says so. So you are more than a conqueror, my friends. Come on now. Take your rightly throne with God in the name of Jesus Christ. Understand who you are. Ephesians 2 and 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, in verse 6, and he has raised us up. Amen. The reason why God has raised us up, because we were dead. I said, the word of God said we were dead in our trespasses and our sins. And when you're dead, you're laying down, you have no life. But Jesus Christ, by the blood, amen, came and he raised us up from that life. I said, he raised us up from the dead. You are alive for eternity tonight, amen. You are alive forevermore because he has raised us up. Praise the Lord. And listen to this. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is present tense. You are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. And again, it doesn't matter how you feel. Amen. It doesn't matter what's going on. Amen. The word of God says that you and I, amen, are presently in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And all the things of heaven, amen, are available to us. Oh, yes. All the kingdom of God is available to us if we make it available, if we make ourselves available to the kingdom of God. You know, the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. First, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all of heaven, all of heaven is at our disposal. All of heaven may ensure that we receive all the things that we have need of. There is no, absolutely no reason for any of us to worry or to stay awake all night long being afraid of anything, amen. Because if you just simply get out of that bed, amen, and you simply get on your knees, and you simply call on the name of Jesus, amen, and you simply seek out to him first, amen, God is there and he will make the way. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. And look at this in verse 7. That in the ages to come, now that is future tense, in the ages to come, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Now that is something that we have the promise of. And we will obtain that when we transfer from this life 
to the life to come. It's waiting for us. It belongs to all who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, 16 and 17 says this. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are, again now, present tense. Amen. Present tense. We are the children of God. At one time, you were the children of the devil. At one time, we were all the children of the devil. Amen. But because we've all been born again into the kingdom of God, We've all been baptized. We've all received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We all love God. Tonight, we are the children of God. Amen. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Amen. God, would you help us to understand and to know that we are just not a people, but we are the people of the Most High God. Amen. And God is on whose side? God is on your side. God is with you. He said he'll never leave you under any circumstances. He said he'll never forsake you under any circumstances. Lo, he is with you always, even to the end of this life, this world, as we know it. That's the word of God. And you are a child of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that is present tense. Thank God. Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, <coughs> both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Has anyone here tonight received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Anybody here tonight? Can I see anybody's hands tonight here that you have as a witness, amen, received the baptism? You're not ashamed that, hey, you've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen? You see, some of you are afraid to raise your hand because you think, oh, what's Brother Andrew really going to say now? Oh, how is he going to catch us now? I'm not trying to catch anybody here tonight. Amen? I'm not trying to catch anybody. Praise the Lord. But the truth of the matter is here, amen, <clears throat> because you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, present tense is this is what you have. In Luke chapter 10 and 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Do you not understand who you are? Amen. amen. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. This is present tense. You have and I have. We have received power because the Holy Ghost has come upon us. The Holy Ghost lives within us. And therefore, by virtue of receiving the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, we have all power over the powers of darkness, amen. And if you will stand in that faith and you will stand believing, God's words, amen, says, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's a little weak. I'm just telling you flat out. That's just weak. That's just weak. That's very weak, my friends. Amen. You may have this question. You may have this question. Well, if nothing will hurt me, then how come people are being you know, put to death for the name of Jesus? Hmm? Good question. But here's the answer. Because when the Lord says, even in John, right, he said, they that believe on me shall what? Never die? Did not God say you'll never die? All right. The problem is we do not understand or many do not understand what Jesus is declaring here. Your flesh is already dead. It's already corrupt. Amen. But your spirit man has been made alive. You see, that's what the life is. Amen. You, your spirit is who you are. And when Jesus says you shall never die, he's speaking of your spirit man. Can you say amen? And when he says nothing shall hurt you, nothing can hurt your spirit man. The flesh is rotting away even as you sit there. He's not looking at the flesh. God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Get with it, my friends. Come on, you are spirit people, and you are spirit-filled people. That's who you are, and nothing by any means. That's why those who have given their lives for Jesus, amen, have been able to go boldly, amen. Peter hanging upside down, amen, and others giving their lives, amen, without fear and without trembling, amen, because they understand. 
You can't hurt me, devil. You can't hurt me, devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. But nevertheless, the scripture says, notwithstanding in this rejoice not. Don't rejoice because you get all the power. That's good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But he says this here. Amen. Don't rejoice that the spirits are, present tense, subject unto you. Why are you letting them run all over you? Let me ask you that question. Why are you letting these imps just have a field day with you when the Word of God says, wait a minute, you should be having a field day with them? That's what the Word of God says. Some of you really need to get up and know how to fight. Amen. You really know how to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. You really know, need to know how to talk the Word of God. And you really need to know how to tell the devil to get out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God said, they are subject to you because of ignorance, though, so many have allowed them to run all over you. And because we got so many snowflakes in the church. No, not here. I mean, you know, overall. <laughs> I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings. But you know, uh, if all you're doing is weeping and crying, you're just a snowflake. Hello? That's all you are. And if that's all you can do, if that's the best that you can most. Oh, God, oh, God. You know, God says, amen, you are more than a conqueror. Amen. You are a soldier. You're not a snowflake. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. But here, it says here, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are present tense subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are present tense, amen, written in heaven. Hey, there's an honor roll up there. There it is, okay? Your names, our names, present tense, it's there. The angels see your names, amen. They, your names are before the angels, praise the Lord. Your names, present tense, are in heaven, written in heaven. Praise the Lord. Okay? I said that my message tonight was dealing with the unintended consequences of a failed witness. So first I brought to you all the things and there's other things here in the word of God declared to who you are, what you are. Amen. And I do believe that if we'll receive this tonight then we no longer will become a failed witness. So let me tell you about the unintended consequences of a failed witness. Some time ago, I did a funeral. This funeral was a young man who walked home one night or came into the house one night. He went into his bedroom to kiss his little daughter. She was sleeping. She he gave her a kiss tonight. And then he walked over to his fiance and, and uh, said he had something to do down in the basement there. And it was late at night. And he said, okay. So he went down to the basement. And uh, about 15 minutes later, it was quiet. So she went down there and... Lo and behold, he had hung himself. Amen. So I did his funeral. And uh, the morning of the funeral, the casket was still open. In New England, we do it a little differently up here, up there. In New England, the casket remains open during the whole service. It's at the end of the service where everybody else leaves that the family is able to remain behind alone and say their final goodbyes. So the casket's open, and uh, the mom of this young boy, 23 years old, was uh, standing there, and she's talking to her son. And so I was just a couple feet away, and uh, I know the mom. And so uh, I'm listening to her, and uh, she's speaking to him. She's a little upset because she says, you promised me. You said you would never do this. You promised me you would call me if you felt this way. You promised me you would never hurt yourself. You promised me. It was there and then that I learned that this young man had a history of depression. 
Amen? And it was there and then that I did not display it. I did not show it. But I got angry. I got upset. And let me tell you why I got angry and I got upset. Because a year prior to this incident, this mother had called me. She'd called me on a Thursday night. I had been witnessing to this particular individual for almost 20 years. And she called me and said she was going to commit suicide. And she had had it, couldn't bear any more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My response to her was, well, if that's what you're going to do, why don't you just buy a plane ticket? Amen. After all, <laughs> you're going to do that with money. You know, you know, what do you care about money? Buy a plane ticket. Come on down here. We're having revival this weekend. I was pastoring at that time. I said, if you will do that, God will bless you. I hung up. That's it. I didn't beg her not to kill herself and all this kind of stuff. I just simply say, hey, you're going to do it? Fine. Go ahead. All right. That's your choice. Go do it. Okay? Now, maybe you all don't like that. Okay? But that's my response. But listen, if you get a plane ticket, since you're going to do this anyway, hello, come on down, and God will bless you. I don't advise anybody to go talk like that to anybody else, okay? <laughs> That's okay for me. Okay. All right, she comes the following day. She says, hey, I got my ticket. I'm coming. Good. She arrived Saturday, the night before, in my house with my daughter sitting there and my wife sitting there. I was able to minister to her. And there and then God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost so powerfully. Amen. My daughter was sitting there and just said, wow, wow, wow. God delivered her. God filled with the Holy Ghost. She came to the service Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, Brother Grimsley was there. He actually ministered to her. She was baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of her sins, speaking of the tongues, amen, and praising the Lord. And everything was powerful. Everything was wonderful. Amen. So she got on a plane Monday morning, went back to where she's from, and somehow between that time she got on a plane, and before she landed, she left it all back here. 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 And she knew her son had this type of a history, and her son knew that she had this type of history. And not once did she witness to her son. Not once did she say, hey, why don't you call him? Why don't you talk to him? Because when, he, when I talked with him and I did what he told me to do, Look what God did for me. You see, that's being a witness. Look what God did for me. I had an experience with God. I had an experience with God. Look what God did for me. Amen. But not once, not once did she ever utter to her son any hope. Not once did she say, hey, give him a call. Not once we can have him come up here. Not once did she say, hey, he can pray for you. Not once did he, she say that, hey, he can talk with you. The unintended consequences of a failed witness. Now, perhaps you have failed in that department. And perhaps it's not been, you know, as tragic as that. Perhaps. Amen. Okay. My toy soldiers. Got a bag of toy soldiers here, okay? <laughs> I know. Praise the Lord. This repre <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> now, these are my grandsons, okay? I don't play with them anymore. I used to when I was a little kid, okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. But let me tell you what these are, okay? These just represent people, okay? All right? All right. Now, the plastic bag kind of represents the world before Christopher Columbus, you know, discovered that it was round. <laughs> Is that okay? All right? Hey, we're with it? Okay. All right. So, you are in this world. Now, let me show you what's happening in this world, okay? In other words, this is the world. What's happening? 
The world is just being beaten up. It's beating you up, amen. The world is going crazy, amen. This is what you experience. I'm telling you, this is what you, you, you experience in this world, all right? You experience pain in this world. You experience, I mean, sorrows in this world. You experience death and the death of loved ones in this world, amen. You experience hurts, amen. You experience cruel words, amen. You experience disappointments, amen. You experience sicknesses. You experience diseases. You experience confusion, amen. You experience wearing. You experience all these things in the world. Is that not true? You know, we are really, 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 really good. I put on a fake smile. But inside, hello, maybe some of you even here tonight, inside, amen, you have been heard and, and you're asking, why did that person say that about me? Or why did that person do that to me? Or how come I don't look like this person? Or how come this person has so much more success than I have? How come this and how come that? And everything and everything and everything and everything around. It's, it's like a wash me. Amen? Amen? Is that not you? Okay, I'll tell you who else this represents. It represents the people of the world. Guess what? What you are experiencing, they too are experiencing. And when you put your fake smile on, guess what? Every day you see them, they're putting their fake smile on too. Let me tell you, when they come to work or they come to school, they come here, they come there, they may have been up all night long. They may have been crying all night long. They may have been weeping all night long. Amen. They may have thought there's no hope for them all night long. But when they walk onto the job, amen, they come in there. <sighs> amen. You want to know why? Because just as humans, amen, we are embarrassed. Amen. We are embarrassed. We are intimidated. Amen. And, and we're just afraid to tell everybody the deep, dark truth that we know that's going on in every single house. Hey, listen, you got split families. I have split families. You have crazy people in your family. I won't tell you which one are crazy am I, but I got some too. <laughs> you got it? They got crazy people in their families. Hello? And they have people all around them that are hurting them, disappointing them, robbing them, taking their joy away. Amen? But they come and they sit at their, at their desk or they come to the work where they're doing there and, and they have a casual conversation and they smile, amen, and pretend everything's okay. But some of them go home and you know what they do when they go home? They commit suicide. Let me tell you that again. Some go home and they commit suicide. Now, it was said this morning, <laughs> it rains on the just and the unjust. Amen? We can take that a couple of ways, but we tend to use it in this way. We tend to use it. Have you ever said, boy, when it rains, it pours? I mean, anybody ever say that? All right, I've said it. Boy, you know, when problems come, right? Boy, when it rains, it really pours. When the problems come, they really come. That's what we're talking about, is it not? Amen. When it rains, it pours. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. You and I and the world, the people of the world, we are all in the same world. And the devil, amen, is the prince and the power of the air. And he is there tormenting every single one of us. He's tormenting the people in the world. And let me tell you something. He's tormenting you too. Hello? Come on, you got that now? I said, you have that now? Amen? But here's something that you have that the world does not have. I said, this is something that you have that the world does not have. You may have the same problems as the person sitting right beside you. You can have a two-way conversation, and everything is identical but one thing. The one thing that is not identical is that you have a comforter in the Holy Ghost. You have the strength of God. 
God is your strength. You have the peace of God. God is your peace. Amen. You have the hope in God. God is your hope. Amen. You see, you have the love of God. God is your love. Amen. You see, you have all the things of the blessings of God in your life. And you have the power and you have the authority to go before the throne of grace. Amen. To receive help in that time of need. And you and I always have that need. But we have the power. We have the privilege. We have the blessing to call on the name of Jesus. And when you and I call on the name of Jesus and we put our trust in the name of Jesus, the Word of God says that He will keep you in perfect peace. Amen. Because you trust in Him. I'm going through a tornado. I'm going through a hurricane. I'm hurt. I'm crying inside. Amen. But I have chosen to trust God. I've chosen to call on His name. I've chosen to give Him my burden. I've chosen to cast it all upon him and therefore when I walk into my job when I walk into what other people are amen I can genuinely I said I can genuinely I can genuinely smile with peace I can genuinely do my job I can genuinely do what I gotta do in school I can genuinely do whatever I'm doing why because I have availed myself I have availed myself to him I have availed myself to the one who loves me. I have availed myself to the one who says amen, that he will not allow you and I to be tempted about that, that which, which is that too much for us. But with a temptation, no matter, and we're not talking about sexual temptation or this time, we're just talking about temptation in life, amen. Just even the temptation that you want to give up. He says he will not allow that. Let me give you two. I'm going to ask the musicians to come up. Let me just give you two examples. I know I, I think I've told, I know I've told this story before. But just recently, this part I haven't, okay, but just a couple weeks ago, I was down in the Chesapeake jail, and I was going through my indoctrination there. Uh, I thank the Lord. They've approved me to come into that facility, and I'm um, just trusting God to do some great things there, that he'll do some great things there. Amen? But, uh, in the indoctrination and the training that I went through, one portion had to deal with communications. Okay. And uh, I, I meant to bring it in tonight, but I forgot it anyway. But anyway, on the teaching aspect of it and describing communication, words, you can speak words. Okay. But you know, a lot of people can speak words, but there's no substance to it. You understand that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But it says 30% of effectiveness is your words, 30%. But 70%, amen, of your effectiveness, amen, comes from your body language, comes from your behavior, comes from what people actually see that you, isn't that amazing? Amen? Isn't that amazing? Amen? Because people are not just listening to what you're saying, they are watching you. Amen? Your actions prove more powerful even the scriptures demonstrate that, and I'll show that to you in a minute here, amen? But anyway, I went through a period of time one time, and uh, depression hit me so badly. I was getting underway for, it was a 10-month deployment. Amen, Jesus. And that was only with three days' liberty out of that 10 months. But in that three days of liberty, I went over and I baptized approximately 12 to 18 young men over there. Amen. amen. Yes, amen. Well, anyway, before that happened, something strange happened to me. As the time got closer, depression really hit me, and I did not want to leave. And it hit me so hard, amen, that I was contemplating I wasn't going to go. Yet my mind understood this. You know, if I don't go, somebody's going to knock on my door, and they're going to come and get me, and I'm going to go back in handcuffs. Okay. But I had never experienced this in all my life. As I, I've been underway in times past and all this kind of stuff, amen? But this occasion, it was really, really heavy. And, and the Saturday before that Monday I was getting underway, I happened to be home by myself, and I was in the living room, and I quoted... 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 
because God says he will not allow me to be tempted about that, that I'm with able to withstand, but with the temptation, make the way of escape. Now, that's God's word. But I stood in my living room, and I said, God, that's what your word says. And this what's happening to me is too much for me, God. I didn't say out of anger. I just said, God, this is too much for me. God, help me. And as soon as I did that, I'm standing in my living room, amen, and it was like a shower was poured out on top of me. And a shower of the Holy Ghost came all over me, my friends, amen. And that Holy Ghost delivered me, amen, from that depression. I was set free because I said, God, your word says you have not put more upon me than I can stand. This is just too much, God. Now here's where the witness comes in. Monday morning, I'm on board that ship. I didn't know somebody was looking at me. I didn't know somebody was watching me. I knew nothing about that at all. But two weeks later, I'm in the executive officer's cabin. I worked for him directly. And he finally said something. This. He said this to me. He says, I was a chief at that time. He says, Chief, he says, I've gone underway many times. He said, I watch people. People are nervous, people are this, people are that. He said, but I watched you. He said, and never in my life have I ever witnessed, and he used that word, have I ever witnessed somebody being so peaceful, having such peace in them. Amen? That's a witness. That's a witness. Let me tell you one more witness. If we can stand, I'll just share this witness with you. In England some years ago, there was a couple, man and wife. They were such ungodly people. They were, present tense. What had happened, I mean, they, re they were really, I mean, if you listen to their story, because he testified about it. They would curse each other, throw things at each other, hate each other, be nasty to each other. Man and wife. He would curse her. She would curse him back and forth. That's what their life was. But she came in church. And uh, she got the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, completely changed. Amen? Completely changed. There's a scripture in the Bible. Let me read it to you if I can find it here. Yeah. 1 Peter chapter 3. This is for women. But it says, here, Likewise, you wives, it says, Be in subjection to you your own husbands, that if any obey not the word. You hear that? If any obey not the word, in other words, the non-believers, okay, they also may, without the word, without preaching to them. Do you hear that? Some of you wives have unsaved husbands. Stop preaching. Do what the Bible says to do. Okay? And it says here, Amen. It says that they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wise. While they behold, while they, the husband, behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. In other words, while they behold your pure, godly behavior. While they behold your pure, godly behavior. Now, our husband in church testified. He says, I know my wife was going to church. She said, nighttime, if she made me a meal, she'd just throw it at me, do this, do that, and we do all these kind of crazy things. She said, and he said, but, you know, I kept my part. I was still cursing her. She never, ever cursed me. She never got angry at me. She never hit me. She never did this. She was just very gentle. She prepared my meals for me. She loved me. She was kind to me. And he observed this, and he noticed there's a change here. What happened to my wife? And he came into church, received the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. Why? Because of a witness. Because somebody, amen, who applied the word of God, and no matter how much he cursed her, no matter how much he threw the dishes at her, she did not respond likewise. She responded as a godly woman. And without the word of God, 
she won her husband. You see, it's not too late. It's not too late for God to help us to become an effective witness. And how do I become an effective witness? Amen. Is again, first of all, recognizing who you are. You must recognize who you are. And you must really recognize how precious you are to this world. I said, you are precious to this world. You are precious to those who are around you. And though you may be experiencing some of the likewise difficulties and problems, because we're all in the same world here, remember, you have a Savior. Remember, you have a comforter. Remember, you have God's strength. Remember, you got hope. You have the joy of the Lord being your strength. You have everything of the kingdom of God at your disposal. And if you would recognize these things, and you begin to practice these things, and in the morning, amen, pray over your mind. In the morning, pray over your spirit. In the morning, you just worship the Lord. You give God some time, amen. And you begin to ask God, Lord, I'm going on my job today. Lord, let me, as the Holy Ghost said this morning, be the light and the salt. Let me be that light and salt. Amen. You see, you've got to begin to begin to pray. God, let me. You see, because when you actually begin to pray, Lord, let me be a blessing to someone. Lord, let me be the light. God, let me be the salt. Amen. You become more aware of who you are. You, became, you become more aware of how precious you are to this world. Amen. And you become more aware how precious you are to God. Amen. And you become more aware of what's really Really going around you. And the truth is, amen, there are those, amen, they'll be silent, amen. And it may take a season, it may take time, and it will, amen. Nobody's going to run right up to you. But I promise you this, that over time, somebody's going to come. Somebody's going to say, I know what you've been going through, but I've watched you. And I just don't understand, how can you possibly go through what you've been going through and you have the peace of God? You have this beautiful countenance upon you. You don't rally at anybody there. You're not cursing anybody there. You're not blaming anybody there. You see, your witness, amen, of being that child, that light and the salt, amen, will draw people to you. I wonder if we just worship God right now for a moment. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. God, we love you, 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 Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you, Lord Jesus. God, hallelujah, 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 Lord Jesus. God, that's it, love him, hallelujah. God, for what you have made us, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. It was on the screen earlier tonight when Brother KJ was ministering tonight. David, God, asking God for a clean heart, pure heart, and a right spirit. One of the things that I have been praying faithfully over every day for a little while now. Now, this is what I'm doing. I'm not where I need and want to be. I want to be what God wants me to be. But I have been praying every day now. Lord, would you do this? I don't want any evil thoughts in my heart, God. Lord, I want a right heart, a pure, a pure heart, a right spirit, God. Lord, if somebody does something wrong to me, Lord, God, help me to love that person. Help me, God, not to speak evil of that person. Help me not to speak evil from my mouth, my heart, Lord Jesus Christ. God, I, I just want to be, I, I really want to be innocent, amen. 
Amen. I want to be innocent of evil. I want to be innocent of hurting anybody. I want to be innocent, amen, of doing wrong. Now, I've been praying these things. You see, and this is why I'm saying tonight here, if you will take time to begin to pray, Lord, use me to be a blessing to someone. God, I pray over my heart, my spirit, my soul. I pray, God. And you begin to talk to God. What, again, I say to you tonight is you become more aware of God's spirit within you. You become more, because when you ask God these things, these are things that pleases God. When you ask God that you want to be more like him, God, I want to be gentle. In fact, I've been praying, God, I want to bear the fruit of your spirit. Love, joy, peace, goodness, grace, mercy, amen, long-suffering, faithfulness, amen, patience, and boy, is that killing me. I've been finding out some things lately. But I'm more aware because I truly, in these days, I want to be a vessel that I may be a blessing. And you want to be a vessel to be a blessing. But if you come before the king and you begin to, on a daily basis in your life, you begin to pray, Lord, Lord, and God will begin to work these things. He will deliver you. He'll deliver you from anger if you have that. He'll deliver you from bitterness if you've got some of that. He'll deliver you from resentment if you've got some of that. He'll deliver you from a temper if you've got some of that. Amen. He'll deliver you from an evil heart. Amen. He'll deliver you, amen, from all these things. Because that pleases God. And that, my friends, will make you and I a more effective and sensitive witness because see that's who God says you are God says you are a witness amen can we just come around the altar and worship him tonight can we just come and just worship him and praise him and to thank him amen for everything that God says that we are amen can we do that tonight and to remember tonight, amen? You are that child of God. You are more than a conqueror, amen. Pray you are a joint heir with Christ Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. That's it, Come, let's just worship him right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, that's it, let's just worship him right now. Hallelujah. And even as you're here tonight, you can begin right now and say, Lord, let me become an effective witness. God, do within me what needs to be done, Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus Christ, to be not what I am tonight, Lord God, but to be more, God, of what you, God, want me to be, Lord. That I may be a blessing, God. That I may be that witness, dear God, wherever I may be, Lord. And God, that your spirit, God, can lead me. Your spirit, God, amen, will witness, dear God. Hallelujah. Let's love one another, amen. Let's love the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's love our neighbors, amen. Let's love the people we work with, amen. Let's love the people we go to school with, amen. Hallelujah. Let's love like God loves. Let's love, amen, like God himself loves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. Worship him. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Hallelujah. As, as I look back over my life, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. over. I can truly, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. As I look back, as I look back over my life, and I think things over.
on and put your hands together. And I think things over. I can truly, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. As I look back, everybody. As I look back over my life. And I think things over. I can truly, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony.
up. Praise him. I lift him up. said that the word is close to you. It's nigh thee. It's in your mouth. The word of faith that we preach. Amen. It's the word that brings faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You want your faith to grow? You need some miracle grow in your soil. That's the word of God. When you're into the word, the word gets into you. And it builds your faith. It builds our faith. Thank you, Brother Andrew Oli. Amen. Thank you for the word tonight. Amen. Thank you, Brother Austin, all of our singers and musicians. So, after all that tonight, you have a homework assignment. Just one. Do you know what it is? It's a testimony. <laughs> it's to be a witness. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Remember our junior quizzers are having an ice cream social. If you'll support that, have some fellowship. Take some time. Amen. With one another. We have camp meeting this week. There is no service here Wednesday evening, uh, but we will have services again Sunday morning, Sunday night, and things back to normal schedule next week. A lot of things happening during the summer. Uh, we've had our youth camps, our family camps taken care of, or going to be taking place this week. And we have a youth congress coming up later this summer. But it's just summertime. A lot of things are happening. But we're going to slow down after this. We're going to get ready for a pastoral anniversary. Amen. But most of all, we're going to be a witness. Amen. I'm, I, I have decided no matter what I go through or what I've been through, I'm going to keep the joy of the Lord. Because it's a whole lot better than my problems or my grief. There's no strength in myself, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. God bless you. Greet one another. Amen. Let's have some fellowship. God bless you.